Now, so far we talk about neuronal weight and we also talk about chemical, right? Now, but we also have to talk about not only that, the other thing that actually plays a very, very important role, okay? The other things that we have to we'll talk about is that, okay, uh, by the way, guys, whenever there's a high level color, we call them hypercapnia, okay? And whenever there's a low level oxygen, we call that hyperaxmia, okay? Now, we also have to talk about other things that are actually going to change this thing. And one of the other things that are going to change is that we're going to talk about the voluntarily control thing, okay? Voluntary control. So, we're going to talk about voluntary control of breathing okay and that has to do with a couple of things if you see this there is a there's a cortex here right the cerebral cortex right here right this cerebral cortex of the nuclei right and this nuclei here here is in the probably in the central sulcus right here okay there's a nuclei called you can, you can simply say this nuclei right here uh it's called like a premotor nuclei okay and then there are also like other nuclei present here too that has to do with that you can voluntarily control like for example if i want to voluntarily uh not try to breathe, I can stop my breathing, right? I could do that. Or if I want to do like fast breathing, you know, I could do that, you know? You know, like so basically I can control that. And what this do is that this can activate like certain, I can voluntarily do that. And what it does is that, I have to make this in red color. What this can do is that it can actually, uh, I'm doing as I found doing voluntarily, what happens, it can send the uh, fibers here. What kind of fiber? It's a corticospinal fiber, remember? It's kind of fiber, descending fibers right here, okay? It's a corticospinal fibers down here. From the corticospinal fibers, it's going to go all the way down. And then let me make this. But it's not going to go, because, but one of the most important things is it's going to go all the way down here. Let's make, let's just make this. It's going to go, but it's, okay, let's just, okay. Just remember, okay, well, let's just make this a little bigger, okay? So we understand this thing. So what's going to happen is that, Okay, so basically what's happening, this guy's going to come right here. Okay, let's make this in a little red, actually. So maybe we'll understand this little one. So what happens is this nuclear is going to give a descending fibers right here, okay? So it's, far, 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 it's going this way, right? So when it's going down, what's gonna, it's not going to supply, it's, there is no collateral innovation to the dorsal respiratory nuclei or your pneumotaxic center. It's just going to go straight down, and what's going to do is it's going to suppress this. Look, it's going to suppress this, those neurons, okay? Like, for example, if I want to... It stop the breathing, right? It's gonna go and go and suppress all this center that is actually going to has to do inspirations. Like for example, it will suppress phrenic nerve. Okay, so it will suppress your phrenic nerve. It will also, uh, in a, like it will also uh, suppress your the muscle that has to do with the inspiratory muscles. Okay. Uh, like for example, those uh, inter, uh, inter, inter, intercostal muscles. Okay, it will directly suppresses that. But just wanted to let you know, it does not have any. It does not supplies or it does not give any fibers to the dorsal, uh, 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 the, your respiratory center. Because respiratory centers are meaning that all this center we call them a respiratory center that is located in medulla and pons. So there's no innovation that is given by the these fibers. Okay, they do go directly suppresses that your little uh, your uh, frank nerves. And then also the internal intercostal muscle. Same thing with if you want to, let's say, uh, let's say if you want to, like, uh, if you want to increase your breathing, same thing it does. What it does is that it it, it can increase the breathing, right? So if I want to do that, I'm voluntarily doing that. What it does is that it increases it is it increases stimulation to this phrenic nerve, also the uh, the the muscle that has to do the inspirations. Okay, uh, it'll do that those accessory muscles I'm talking about. It will do that with this fiber, right? But, remember, there are also other things, like, for example, like, whenever you're angry, or whenever you are, like, you're emotional, or emotional, or maybe in a pain condition, right? Like, pain has to do with what? It has to do with your limbic system, right? Or your anger, or any sort of emotion that has to do with your limbic system, right? We'll make this our limbic system, like, down here, okay? So like, down here. If this is my limbic system, right here, limbic systems, or even uh, what happens is that if I'm really angry uh, with, with someone, and if I want to like, you know, kick someone else, you know, I can actually, this limbic system have a fiber that's going downwards, right? And what these do is like, they go, and they will actually, what happens is that they will stimulate, on they're going down, they will stimulate this uh, nuclei, which is my dorsal respiratory nuclei, okay? And that's how you increase on your respirations, okay? Uh, with this. And there's also like, Look, whenever like, there's also like temperature regulations, remember, like whenever you are, 
Now, let's say you're hot or cold, uh, your breathing can change, right? And that has to do with your, whenever we talk about temperature control, it's like, where are the, where are the temperatures, uh, where, where are the temperature needs are located? You will talk about hypothalamus, right? And if you talk about hypothalamus, let's just make this, I don't know, somewhat hypothalamus, because remember, hypothalamus is kind of like, you have a, let's just make it hypothalamus right here, okay? Hypothalamus right here. This hypothalamus, and you guys also going to come down right here, we're making different color, okay? And this is a different color right here. It's going to come down right here, okay? And then it's going to also have this innovation to innovation to the gives a sequence that's going down from the hypothalamus right here. It's going to give fibers to the dorsal respiratory group, and if it's more stimulated, it can also give uh, it can overspill to this ventral respiratory group, and then it will increase your what. Like your your respiratory respirations, okay? Uh, that that has the hypothalamus. Basically, you, your limbic system plays a role in your respiratory center, like in your emotions when you're pain and angry. Your breathing can go breathing can go up and down, okay? Depends on what you want to do. Same with the hypothalamus, right? If you're in the cold or hot, like remember, like. Uh, especially like, you know, uh, if you're in like a cold water or something, sometimes we do this, like and we shiver and that kind of stuff, right? And then, because, or even like, you know, like in your winter seasons, right? Sometimes we... Sometimes in the winter, it's because it's very, very cold. If you're just like, uh, if you're outside, maybe if you go outside of snow or something, then you, what have you, you see your breathing, breathing changes, right? And that has to do with your hypothalamus, right? Uh, and that's how, uh, this is how the, your breathing changes, okay? Now, so, so far we talked about a lot of different things, right? So, neural law, uh, we talked about the voluntary controls, uh, we talked about the chemical uh, controls, okay, with the peripheral chemoreceptors, central chemoreceptors, but we also have to talk about now the couple of things is that, okay, we have some left here, right here, okay, and let's erase this part, and that is called, okay, receptor thing. So, one of those receptor things that we have to understand is that we have to talk about how, like, your body, okay, uh, changes your, like, for example, is there any sort of like a, uh, a thing that can actually uh, control your uh, respiratory center, and that has to do with something called this. You know, we're going to talk about some reflex. We have to talk about there is a fundamental called like mechanoreceptors or like um, a muscle mechanoreceptor. They also play a role in your your breathing. Okay, and we'll first we'll talk about long mechanoreceptors. Okay, we we'll call them. A, we call this something called long uh, mechanoreceptors. I just want to make sure that I'm not missing anything. Okay, and then this uh, uh, long uh, receptor is called okay, long okay, that's a pulmonary receptor. Okay, I'm gonna write down a couple of things here. Okay, let's just come down here. These are long receptors. Okay, so sometimes there is a let's say we need to take a lot of air in. Okay, so these are called pulmonary stretch receptor. Okay, so that called what is this called? Okay, let me write it down here and I'll mention this pulmonary. Okay. The stretch receptor. And what it does is this, okay? Pulmonary stretch receptor, what it does is that whenever you take like, okay, lots of air in, okay? Because the volume of air in, but your your body can only take like certain amount of air. It cannot take like a large amount of air in. So what happens is whenever you uh, now take air in. Remember, this is this is a conducting zone, right? Conducting zone. They have this small, the the pseudostratified, like ciliated cells, all that kind of stuff, right? The small muscle cells, right? So what happens is that whenever you take the air in, or let's say the, there's lots of air in, there will be a slow adaptive changes you get to see in the or your conducting zone, okay? But what's going to happen is that whenever your airway gets stretched, like bigger and all that kind of stuff, because a long because of the long volume, okay, what happens is that that gives fibers, okay, that gives fibers to, oh, gotta make something, it gives a fibers, okay, to back to this dorsal respiratory group of nuclei, okay, uh, dorsal respiratory group of nuclei right here, okay, it gives a fibers to dorsal respiratory group, to inhibit, like to, we don't want this, we don't want more air in, we need to inhibit the inspiration, so we don't want to take the, take the air in, because that responds to the, like, based on the long volume. If you have increased a large volume, this gets stimulated and responds and give a negative feedback uh, signals to the dorsal dorsal respiratory nuclei. Through what? Through the vagus, uh, yeah, through the vagus nerve. That's what it does, okay? Now, this is also called, and uh, when they do that, then what's going to happen? It's going to cause prolonged expirations. So you have this, uh, this, there's a name also called this, called, okay, let me write it, it's called a herring, 
Herring Brewer Reflex. That's what they call. Okay. Basically, this cause, okay, prolonged, prolonged expirations. Okay. With what? With switch off of the inspiratory center or dorsal inspiratory center. That's what these guys do. Okay. Now, now we talked about the uh, the palmistress receptor. There are also some receptors called irritin receptors. Okay. These are called, okay, this is one right here. Okay. Number two, we're going to write down, and it's called irritin receptor. What is it called? So let me write down irritin receptor right here. This irritin receptors responds to some kind of like, uh, like a, some kind of like chemical, uh, some kind of like noxious substances, right? That can damage your, uh, damage your smooth muscle cells, right? Some kind of irritation that can cause irritating in your, like, airways, okay? And, uh, some kind of like, like, very different, uh, uh, noxious substances, as I said. And also, like, they're very, very irritating to, like, your histamine. You have to, I have to mention this, histamine. Also, serotonin. Okay, and also, uh, prostaglandins. Okay, and the noxious substances. All right, they are called, called irritant receptors. Okay, what happens now? These are present in smooth muscle cells, right? In the bronchi, like down here too. Okay, and these smooth muscle cells have a collateral. They have a, and they are this have innervation to what? Your vagus nerve, because vagus is like what? The like vagus nerve is like you know, it's a sensor, right? It bring the sensory. Okay, and even this histamine, like for example. Like, you know, histamine, especially for the asthma patient or something, it'll be vagus nerve, and then it'll go, and then it'll send to the, your dorsal respiratory for nuclei, right? So whenever, whenever it goes to the dorsal respiratory, what is that? What can I, does it get negative or positive? It gets positive feedback, right? So because it gives a positive feedback, what's going to happen? The dorsal respiratory nuclei will respond to that. So it will respond to the what? It will respond to a lot of different things. One thing that it might, like for example, let's say it goes to this area. What is this called? The carina, right? This carina. It will require, it, it will cause this cough. Cough reflex will happen, okay? Uh, sometimes it will, it irritant will have a, it will cause to have a gasping. Okay? Have a gasping. Cough, gasping. And also the, it will take, it will increase your prolonged inspirations. Increase your prolonged uh, inspiration time. You can simply say that. Okay? Now, prolonged inspiration time right here. Now, this is with the irritant receptor right here. We'll talk about this, right? Now, not only that, we have, we have to have much more things right here, right? Now, there's also other thing called right, right here. If you come back here, the, you see this alveolar right here? This alveolar have the cells, right? Like pneumocytes, type 1, type 2 pneumocytes, right? And then what happens is like, and down there's a capillaries right here, right? There's a, there are some receptors located here. We call them a J cells. Okay? Or they're also called juxta capillary. It's not juxta glomero. Don't get confused. Okay? It's called juxta. Juxta means near. Juxta capillary. Or they're also called, they are, they are called pulmonary, pulmonary C cell. Okay? And what, and what this guy, these guys are very, very sensitive to what? These guys are very, very sensitive to like, or stimulated by, let me write down a couple of things right here, okay? Just for you to understand, uh, thing. Okay, you can, they are, these guys get stimulated right here, okay? Okay, let me use a different color. These guys are very, very sensitive to a couple of things right here. These are maybe long injury, okay? Very, very sensitive to like, uh, consistent heart failure, like pulmonary, pulmonary edema. Okay. Also, like, like pneumonia too. Okay, pneumonia, pulmonary edema, lung injury, and uh, most important thing is that if you have uh, some kind of certain chemical agents or pulmonary, pulmonary vascular, I just write pulmonary, like a vascular. Okay, uh, pulmonary vascular uh, congestions. Okay, what these guys, they guys, these guys, what they do is, whenever these guys have this pulmonary lung injury, whatever, these guys will sense it, the juxtacapillary pulmonary C cells will sense it, and what happens is that they have a swimmer cells with the, with the vagus, right, what happens, it will give, it will give a stimulation to the dorsal respiratory group of nuclei, right, and what does it do? It will cause rapid or shallow breathing, it will cause a rapid and then shallow breathing, right, okay, let me just write down this one right here, it will cause, right down here, it's called rapid and shallow breathing. Okay? Breathing. This is what the juxtacapillary will do. Now, 
We talked about this. Now, what else? What else? Is there anything we are we're missing right here? We also have to talk about the chest wall proprioception, right? Or proprioception. Uh, generally, we'll talk about proprioception. Let's just talk about this one right here. So, what do I write? I do write down, like, let's be, let me write down here. Okay, let's, let's just make, uh, okay, let's just make this as a, as a muscles, right? Well, let's just say muscles. And what do the muscles have, right? Muscles, we need to talk about this. What's a muscle cells, right? So, muscles have a jo uh, like jo from joints, tendon, like from, like, let's just say, like joints, okay, like from tendon, okay, like Golgi tendon. We're talking about Golgi tendon, we're talking about like Golgi, Golgi, right? Muscle spindles, muscle spindles, right? What are these? Like, they will give up proprioceptions, okay? Proprioception, meaning that. It's a proper reception, right? Basically, what is it? Uh, provide information about the, that these guys will give a proper reception signals and provide information about the movement and the muscle tension, right? Muscle tension. And how do they do? Okay, if I want to make it, this proper reception and muscle tension, what do they do? Basically, what they do is like, okay, guys, if you remember, like, okay, we'll just make it, what do I make it? Okay, let's just swallow me down here. Uh, if I want to make it right here, okay. Uh, let me just erase this part right here and then make it little drowning arch. Let's erase this too. If I remember this spinal cord, what, what happens is that when the proper reception comes in right here, like you know, if you have to make a uh, nuclei right here, let's just make this uh, nuclei right here, okay? You have this part right here. Remember, let's say the signals comes in, right, from the proper receptions, right? The sensory innovations. Okay, the C fibers or A fibers, all the brain processes, and it goes to the dorsal, the dorsal ganglia. Okay, and then from there it go to the what? It go to this. It goes and then it goes. It doesn't go here. It goes to the your nucleus of gracilis and nucleus of cutaneous. Let me make this nucleus of uh, gracilis here and nucleus of cutaneous here. Right, this fiber goes to this, and then it goes all the way down. Right, it goes like that. Same thing with this way, because fiber like it. And also, and then from there, it'll keep going up, and then at the lower pawns right here, at the lower pawns, let's just make, if let's make this, uh, let's say this medulla right here. If this medulla, okay, let's just make a little, little big medulla right here. If this is my medulla right here, what happens at the lower part of the, what happens? It does, what it does? It decussates, right? It goes to other directions, and become what? It becomes your medial meniscus, right? And when it's going up, the med it becomes medial meniscus. This medial meniscus, right? Okay, they actually gives some innovations or give some uh, fibers to the my dorsal respiratory group of nuclei right here. It gives the fibers also. So it goes dorsal respiratory group of nuclei right here. It goes down all the way down to dorsal, dorsal respiratory group of nuclei. So that's how, like, and especially this happens during the, I have to mention this, exercise. Okay, and these these phenomena when uh, we call them is a hyperpenia or something hyperpenia or something, hyperpenia right that's what it's called. So basically, this is happens during like your exercise. Okay, uh, uh, that's how uh, that you you want to increase your uh, ventilations uh, uh, to the proprioceptions. Okay.